this is what the internet is for, for videos like these. I saw this and I needed to recreate it. I needed to figure out how this was shot, how one could make a shopping cart so enticing, so exciting, so invigorating. I must recreate this. I must learn how to do it and share with you all how to make a video like this. All right, first I gotta pick my subject. I feel like I need to stay on theme here. Something that isn't typically shot this way. I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the toaster. All right, it's gonna be a toaster. Real quick, I just need to plug myself because since we're about to shoot a product video, I do have an online product video course that teaches you how to create cool looking product videos. I'll put a link in the description. Feel free to check it out. First step is we have to stage the toaster. The spotlight here coming and hitting the toaster head on. And then from the side, I put a blue tube light. I think this is the vibe that we're going for. I think this is the right setting. What do you think? Now, I just need to prep the gear. So my final setup for this was my Sony a7S III with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens and aperture MC light mounted on top on my Ronin RSC2 gimbal. Then I started filming. I shot everything in either 4K 60 frames per second or 4K 120 frames per second. I recommend 120 if your camera can do it, but you need to shoot in slow motion for sure. I captured wides, close-ups, very smooth, consistent motion is key. You don't need to speed up super fast or slow down super fast. Just stay consistent and at a slower pace. And then the most important thing is to pick a point of focus. For example, the knob of the toaster here, when I was shooting, I tried to have the knob aligned within the center of the frame as best I could throughout the motion that I was doing. And you wanna do this for pretty much all your shots. That's how you're gonna get that cool, like stabilized motion effect. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just get it the best that you can. So I'd recommend turning the guides on in your camera. Pick a point, stay on it consistently as you're doing your camera movement. All right, welcome to the edit bay. So we're in Premiere Pro. I've spent a little bit of time playing around with this and seeing the best way to get this effect. And there's a few different steps, but it's actually pretty simple. So if we look at the example, we have this like push in, you know, it speeds up, it slows down, and then it reverses into the same motion, which is the next clip. So the next clip is pushing out. Once we move forward, then we basically just have speed ramping into one another. So there's not really like that reverse. It just kind of, they, they flow into each other, the clips. So I have one of my selects here and I'm gonna show you how we can get this effect on this clip and then you can apply it to all your other clips. First thing you wanna do is slow down your footage. So right click, go to speed duration. In this case, I can slow mine down to 20% because I shot in 120 frames per second. Click okay. Then you have this nice and slow, looks stunning. And then we're gonna do some keyframing. So I'm gonna go over to my tool icon here Make sure show guides is selected. And then in the program menu, I'm gonna pull from these sides here. And this is where we're gonna get our guide so that we can do a basic like motion tracking effect. And for this, I think I wanna focus in right here on the center of the toaster. So I'm gonna scale in quite a bit as well. So now I know throughout this whole clip, I need these guides to be right here on this center of the toaster. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these keyframes over here in my effects controls panel under motion. I'm gonna to go to the beginning and then I'm gonna adjust my position so that it lines up once again. I'm gonna skim through, make sure it aligns and then it kind of, you know, it veers off. So I'm gonna realign it and I'm just gonna do this for the rest of the clip. So now when I skim through it, we can see how much more steady it is and it's kind of focused in on that one part. And now it looks much more smooth. From here, we're gonna right click on our clip and click nest and okay. Then I'm gonna go over to my effects and I'm gonna add a warp stabilizer, drag that on top. So once that's done stabilizing, you just wanna check it and make sure it looks pretty smooth. I really like to 
use my cursor and skim through it so you can kind of just see how the motion is. Then we're gonna right click again, and we're gonna nest this again, and then right click, go all the way down to show clip keyframes, time remapping speed, have that selected. And now we're gonna do some speed ramping. So we're gonna add keyframes for speed ramping. This is a great way to do it. I'm gonna skim through and figure out at what point do I want the clip to slow down. I'd say right about here. I'm gonna hold down command on my keyboard and click right here where this line is and that's gonna add a keyframe. To the left of it is where I can adjust all this speed. So I'm gonna drag this all the way up like that and now we can already see how that's starting to look and then what i'm going to do hover over the keyframe here you'll see these this little drag icon you're going to drag it and that's going to like ease the the motion a little bit so it's a little bit smoother so now we're already getting that effect now you can do two things from here you can clip it duplicate this right click speed duration click reverse clip and that's gonna give you that reverse look so you can kind of transition one into another. Or you can pick a point where you want it to speed up again and that's also the other way that this clip transitions. So we can have it go in and then I add a keyframe here, drag this up even more. And now you can have each clip transition into each other. One thing that we are missing is a little bit of motion blur. So you can see in the beginning, we get like this nice motion blur in these clips and we're just gonna recreate that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make an adjustment layer here. Adjustment layer, drag that over on top of your clip. I'm gonna go into the effects tab once again and type in directional blur. Drag that onto your adjustment layer. Go into effects controls. And now we're gonna keyframe this directional blur effect. I'm gonna go to where the clip slows down and under the directional blur effect, I'm gonna add these two keyframes for direction and blur link. I'm gonna go back to the beginning, basically to where the clip is sped up. And I'm gonna drag these out so that we get some blur, some motion blur as you can see. And then when you play that, it kind of adds a little bit of motion. What I like to do so that you can kind of have some, some more of the toaster in focus is I go ahead and I create a mask. And for this, I'm gonna create a circular one, invert it, feather it a little bit. So now as you can see, just the toaster's in focus. So it kind of looks a little bit cooler. One thing I don't like about directional blur is it creates this weird like black outline. So a way to fix that is to go into the effects tab, type in transform, put that on your adjustment layer and then scale it in by like 105 maybe. And that will get rid of that. And then what you can do on this adjustment layer is you can go through all your clips you can go ahead and like add the keyframes when the blur should start to increase. You can also move your mask around by adding uh, keyframes for the mask path. And you'll go ahead and do that for all your clips. And then you're gonna end up with something like this. The other aspect to this is you obviously want to cut to the beat, but we see in the original, when the beat drops, there's like this sort of like glowy flash transition here. And a really quick way you can recreate this in Premiere is to go into your effects tab, video transitions, immersive video, and then a lot of these will actually work really well, but what I like is the VR spherical blur. I'll go ahead and drag that in between my two clips. It's very long, so then I'll go over to my effects controls and I'll change the duration up here to about three seconds. And then that's gonna give you this sort of look. <laughs> And without further ado, here is my iteration of this amazing effect, but with a toaster. I hope you enjoy. You are